Hey, and welcome back. We're gonna be talking about some best practices for inputs. One thing that you should know is that the height of your input should always be the same height as your primary button. To maintain that visual consistency, remember when we learned about spacing in grids? Well, we defined a base unit of eight pixels. And using that, we can create input field heights of 32 pixels or 40 pixels or even 48 pixels and so on. So right now, if we look at our pixel height, we have a 40 pixel height and on our button, we have a 30. We need to adjust this just because right now it does not look consistent. We'll just adjust that to 40 and all of a sudden that looks much better. Let's just reverse it to see what it looked like before. Much more consistent. And we can just make sure that it's spaced. You can leave extra space if you want at the end, but that looks much more better than it did before. Another thing, your input field length. All inputs in a form should be the same length, but you know, that's just basically a guideline. That varies depending on the type of answer you may ask the user to answer. A good example is when we ask users for their credit card information. Let's take a look at the CVV number. Now this input field shouldn't be too long because it's generally only three digits. Sometimes having long inputs for short answers can confuse the user into thinking they may have entered a too short answer. There's an easy way to fix this. What we can do is we can just shrink this, shrink that. And what I'm doing here is I'm holding shift, shift and control, and I'm just going to nudge that over. And if you don't know what a nudge is up here in my bar, if I go to preferences and I go to nudge amount, I have a big nudge of 10. I would probably set that to my base unit or some variation of it. So I'm going to set it to four. And you'll notice that if I hold shift control, I can decrease the width of this frame based off of my nudge amount. So I have four, eight, 12, 16. And there you go. And now everything looks like it's spaced properly. And that looks much better. So if we go back and we look at the, what it looked like before, this looks much better. So remember, based off of the context of the type of answer you're looking for, you can adjust the input size, especially for something like this. Next is labels. So your labels should be short and clear and you know easy to read. It's best to keep your labels short and sweet and to the point. One to two words is generally enough to describe what is being asked. So the label should contrast the input font also. So generally people bold and shrink them a bit. They also lower the opacity sometimes. I mean, that's a visual thing that you can do afterwards. Another tip is to make sure only the first letter is capitalized for easy scanning and readability. So right now we have a very long input and all we want the user to do is type their first name. So the easiest way to do that is just to ask for a first name and that's it. I wouldn't capitalize the second word. I like to just capitalize just the, the first one and let the rest uh, drop to lowercase. That also depends on the type of input. I mean, you could be asking for some information that needs to be capitalized, like CVV, that is another example. It's just based off of context, but generally this is what I do. This is like kind of like a semi-bold. You can bold it just a bit to contrast whatever's in the input. Let's see uh, if we can change this input right here. These are my components. We got label, nope. What do we got here? Default, or we can do active. And if we go into our, okay, well, we'll get to that in a second. But generally, yeah, make sure that your label differentiates from, from your input. So I'm gonna just uh, write some text in here. So there's my first name. And what I would do is I would probably have it at whatever font size that I think is best, maybe 16. 
And that would be something like a regular at 100%. And that is definitely enough in terms of uh, showing some sort of hierarchy within the input and to differentiate between the actual label and the input text. So make sure that you are doing all of that and make sure that you aren't having too long of uh, sentences or something like that when you're asking for a question in terms of a label. Uh, keep it short and sweet. Okay, so here's another one. Now, placeholders. Now, this is another thing that people debate a lot over. To placeholder or not to placeholder, I'm sorry, I just kind of butchered Shakespeare there for a bit. But anyways, placeholders, you know, at, at their best, they show repetitive information. And at its worst, it hides important information and reduces accessibility. So when a user clicks on a placeholder and starts to type in an answer, that automatically replaces the placeholder with whatever the user has inputted. And this can be a problem if the placeholder is being used as a label or a hint. At that point, the user can no longer see that text and can't review their answer. As for accessibility, they're a little harder to see due to lighter color and are often undetected by page readers. Let's take a look here. So right now we have spouse's birthday as a placeholder and yeah, that is not good. So what we can do here is just remove this text, we can hide it. And we're just going to duplicate that. And what we can do is just type in spouse's birthday. And I don't really think you need a hint for that. You can do something like this. So spouses. So if we were to use this, for example, I would remove this placeholder text because like I said, placeholders aren't necessarily that useful. I mean, they are useful when you use the information there, but when it's hidden, it's gone. And what you can do is just have hint text on the right side or below whatever suits your design best and whatever uh, works with users best. But what I've done here is I have the optional hint content right here instead of within the placeholder. Do this rather than have a placeholder because it's better solution in the end. And that's it for some best practices for inputs.